Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. Do you like doing things manually or would you rather click a button and have Excel do it for you? Yeah, I thought as much. That's what macros are for. And today I'm going to show you just how simple it is to create one. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. So here's a dashboard that's used by Excellent Ice Cream's senior management. And for the revenue per month, they like to switch between a column chart and a line chart. Now, why not just create two charts? Well, in the real world, you might, but this is a demo. Anyway, to do it manually, they'd have to select the chart, then go up to the design tab, click on change chart type and choose the line chart. And then when they're done looking at that, they'd have to click on change chart type again, click on column and choose the column chart. Now, wouldn't it be much, much quicker to click a button and have that happen automatically? So I've created two buttons and each button has a macro behind it. So if I click the line chart button, it runs the macro that converts that chart to a line chart. Click the column chart button and it runs a macro that converts that chart to a column chart. Another example of where they could benefit from a macro is that we have two slicers on the dashboard. The slicers allow you to apply a filter. So if I clicked on the Sarah button on this slicer over here, it applies a filter to only show me the sales for Sarah. If I want to look at Sarah's sales for the first three months of the year, I'll click on the January button, hold the command key down and keep it held down and click on February and March. But what happens when I finish looking at that data and want to clear the filters? I need to click the clear filter button. There's one at the top right of each slicer, but that would mean clicking it twice. So instead, I've created a macro, I've attached a button to the macro, and when I click the button, it runs the macro. OK, it's not a huge time saving, but apply the concept to a process that, done manually, takes, say, 30 minutes, and there's 29 minutes and 59 seconds saved. OK, let me show you how to create a macro. Actually, I'm going to create three macros. But before I create a macro, I have to make sure that the developer tab is visible and by default it's hidden. So I click on Excel on the menu bar just to the right of the Apple logo. Click on preferences. Click on ribbon and toolbar. And on this right hand panel, scroll down to the bottom and put a tick against developer. Click save and close the preferences. So now if you look at the ribbon, we've got the developer tab. The first macro will convert the column chart to a line chart. Now I want to include selecting the chart as part of the macro, because if I don't, that means the user has to click on the chart before they run the macro. If they don't, it will try and convert the currently selected object, which could be another chart. It could be a cell, but it will try and convert that to a line chart. So I'm not going to click the chart now. I'm going to click the chart when I create the macro. The way I'm going to create the macro, by the way, is using Excel's macro recorder. So to do that, click on developer record macro. I need to give the macro a name. Now, there's a couple of rules here. Macro names must begin with a letter and cannot have any spaces in them. So I'm going to call this macro line chart and click OK. Just before I do click OK, though, um, the macro is going to be stored in this workbook. There's several places you can store the macro, but in this case, the macro is really part of this file. So it needs to be stored in this workbook. You can, if you want to, assign a keyboard shortcut key to the macro. So let's say command option L, L for line chart. So when somebody presses command option and L in this file, it will run this macro. But because I'm going to assign a button, I'm not going to assign a keyboard shortcut. So I'll just click on 
OK. And as soon as I click OK, the recorder begins recording. And you can tell that because on the Developer tab, we've now got Stop Recording instead of Record Macro. So everything I do now, every mouse click I make, everything I type will be recorded and become part of the macro. So what I'll do is I'll click on the chart to select it, go up to Design, go to Change Chart Type, click on Line and select the type of line chart that I want. And that's all I want the macro to do. So I'm going to go up to the Developer tab and click Stop Recording. And that is our first macro done. The second macro will be almost identical. It will convert the line chart to a column chart. So I'll just click away from the chart so that I can select the chart as part of the macro and go to Developer, Record Macro, and I'll call this one Column Chart. Again, I'll make sure that it's stored in this workbook. I'm not going to assign a keyboard shortcut key and I'll click OK. So we are now recording. Click on the edge of the chart, click on Design, Change Chart Type, Column, and choose the type of column chart. And that's all I want the macro to do. So I will click on Developer, Stop Recording. The third macro is going to clear both filters. So for that to work, I need to apply a filter. It doesn't actually matter what I select. So I'll just pick Angela and January. And what I will be recording is clicking the clear filter button on each slicer. So I'll go to the developer tab, record macro, and I'll call this macro clear filters. I could call it clear slicers, but clear filters is fine and click OK. And then I'll click the clear filter button from the first slicer, click the clear filter button from the second slicer, and that's it. So I'll click Stop Recording. So that is how to use the macro recorder that's built into Excel. Everything that you click, everything that you do, everything that you type is recorded. Now you can run a macro without a button. You can go up to the Developer tab, you can click Macros, you can choose the macro and click Run. I'll do that again to change it back to a column chart. Go to the Developer tab, which I'm on, go to Macros, choose Column Chart and click Run. But it's much quicker, it's much easier for end users just to have a button. So how do I create a button? Well, there's actually a couple of ways. You can use the button button that's on the developer tab. I don't use that. I used to, but I don't use it now because it has fewer options when it comes to formatting and coloring. So what I do now is I tend to use on the insert menu, the shapes. You can use any of those shapes. So if you wanted a smiley face or a lightning bolt to be the icon that the users click on to run the macro, so be it. But if you want to keep it professional, then go for one of these rectangles because they're kind of the, the shape of a, a traditional typical button. So I'll click on the first rectangle, draw out the rectangle and I can always resize it and I'll just move it to where I want it. I can also change its color up on the shape format ribbon. I'll choose red and then to put some text in the button, double click inside it and just type. So I'll put here line chart. I can, it doesn't have to be the name of the macro. It can be anything. It could be uh, convert revenue per month chart to line chart, but that's a bit too much text, I think. If you select the text, you can format it. So we could center it vertically and horizontally. We could make it bigger. We could change the color. Rather than creating another button, I'll actually just copy and paste that first button and then just change the text. So I'll change that to say column chart. I'll then copy the button again and drag the copy over to where the slices are. And I'll change the text on that to be clear filter. 
I've also noticed that those two aren't lined up, so I'll select them both and go up to Shape Format, Align, Align to Bottom. That's better. Now, at the moment, they're not actually clickable buttons. They're just shapes. So if I right click on the first shape, the line chart shape, on the menu that pops up when you right click, I'll choose Assign Macro and choose the macro called Line Chart and click OK. And do the same thing for the column chart. Right click, Assign Macro, choose Column Chart and then right click on the clear filter shape, assign macro, choose clear filters, click OK. So now I have three buttons. Each one has a macro attached to it. So if I click the line chart button, it runs the macro that's attached to that button. Same with the column chart. And if I just apply a filter and then click clear filter, it's clear the filter. The last thing I need to do is I need to save the file. Now, if I go to the save button, I get a message popping up. Not exactly the most user friendly message. The following features cannot be saved in macro free workbooks. What is a macro free workbook? It doesn't really explain that. And then it talks about VB project. Well, macros, although I've recorded them, the recorded commands are converted into VBA, which is Excel's built in programming language. They're converted into VBA code and standard Excel files, files with an XLSX extension can't have VBA code in. So if I want to keep the macros, which obviously I do, I have to click on no and then change the file type to a macro enabled file, which I'm going to do. If I click on yes, I'll actually lose all the macro that I've created and it'll just save it as a standard Excel file. So read that message carefully. I do know people that have clicked yes too quickly and lost the macro they've created and had to start again. So I'll click no. And then I will change the file type to macro enabled workbook. I'll keep the file name as basic macros and I'll click save. And that is how to create macros and attach them to buttons. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. My free weekly newsletter is packed with tips and tricks to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up to that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.